All right, so today <clears throat> our focus is, as the title states, or says up here, review of linear equations and solutions. And we're just, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to tie up some loose ends some, for, for, from some things that I saw last week, and then we'll extend that out a little bit. But <clears throat> no matter the type of problem that you're doing, anytime you're asked if something is a solution or not, you're simply substituting the solution into whatever the equation looks like and seeing if it makes a true statement or not. And so in this problem in particular, uh, what you're trying to do, of course, and most of you are very aware of this, is you're going to substitute the value y equals negative 3 in for y here and in for y there and see if it makes a true statement. Can all of you do that, please? So, of course, what this ends up looking like is it ends up looking like this. Negative 4 times negative 3 plus 12 equals 18 minus 2 times negative 3. And we're trying to see if that is a true statement or not. Is that a true statement, yes or no? Yes, yes it is. So, therefore, it is a solution because we have positive 12 plus 12 on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have 18 plus 6. Both sides are 24, and so therefore it is a true statement. And so, based on that, it is a solution. So let's go ahead and click that. It is a solution, and click Submit. And let's go to question 2. It doesn't matter what the equation looks like. If you are asked to check to see if something is a solution or, or not, you do go through the same process. So could I get all of you to try number 2? So as I'm walking around, uh, some of you are just substituting the value in. Some of you are actually solving the equation. Um, it doesn't matter. It, when you solve the equation, the answer you get is a solution. So it, <clears throat> it's up to you how you want to go about this. Some of you are uh, rewriting it as 10 times the quantity, 1 minus 3x equals 8 times the quantity, uh, 10 minus 2x, and then substituting in. Once again, it does not matter. But the question is when z is negative 5, is that a true statement? So is negative 5 a solution, yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, yes it is. Yes, it is. Because we're going to end up with, um, on the left-hand side, uh, 1 plus 15 over 8, which, of course, is 2. On the Right-hand side, we end up with 10 plus 10 over 10, which is also 2. And so we end up with 2 being equal to 2. Therefore, it is a solution. So let's go ahead and answer that one. <clears throat> and the idea of a solution or not is the same no matter how many variables we are dealing with. So in number 3... Select all solutions below that satisfy the linear equation. So we're trying to figure out if we substitute, for example, negative 2, negative 5 in. Anytime you have an ordered pair, all ordered pairs are x value, comma, y value. So in negative 2, comma, negative 5, x is negative 2, y is negative 5. So we're seeing if we substitute them in, to the left-hand side, negative 2 for x and negative 5 in for y, if that truly is negative 4. So let's get that one out of the way, first of all. Is negative 2, negative 5 a solution? Well, there's only one way to know, and that's to try it. Negative 5 times negative 2, because x is negative 2, and plus negative 5. The question, is that equal to negative 4? So we have 10 plus negative 5, and last time I checked, that was not negative 4. That's positive 4. That's not equal to negative 4. So we know it's not negative 2, negative 5. That is not a solution. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to go through all the rest of them and choose which ones are truly solutions for that linear equation. All right, as we're finishing up number three, could I get you to compare what you came up with 
for number three with your shoulder partner. Go. All right, Emma, what did you and your shoulder partner come up with? Five twenty one, okay, hold on. So we have negative five times five plus twenty one. You're telling me that that is equal to negative four. That's negative five plus twenty one. Obviously that is negative four. That one will work. Keep going. Negative six, negative thirty four. Negative six, negative thirty four. So we have negative five times negative six plus negative thirty four. That's supposed to be equal to negative four. We have 30 plus negative 34. Clearly, that is equal to negative 4. So that one works. And 2, 6. two comma 6. So we have negative 5 times 2 plus 6. That is supposed to be equal to negative 4. And we have negative 10 plus 6. That clearly is negative 4. So all three of those should be the solution. So let's select them. <clears throat> And that, of course, is correct. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> one of the semi-new things, we've talked about in full detail how to graph any equation that is in slope-intercept form, but all of those have had two variables in them. Notice that this equation only has one variable, y equals negative 2. So first question is, what in the world are we going to do here? Well, if I were to ask you to come up with some solutions... No matter what solutions that you were able to come up with, they should all be something, comma, negative 2. Something, comma, negative 2. And you should be writing this down in your notes. Something, comma, negative 2. So the y value is always negative 2. The y value is always negative 2. So I left the x value blank. The reason is because you can use any x value that you want to. But the key is y always has to be negative 2. So you might say, well, 0, negative 2, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 2. It doesn't matter what you use for the x values. And then to graph uh, with MyOpenMath, we really only need two of them. So go ahead and plot two of those ordered pairs. <clears throat> And then what does that look like? Well, of course, that looks slightly different than the other equations that I've asked you to graph so far. And so here's the deal. <clears throat> anytime, and if I were you, I would add this to your notes. Anytime we have y equal to some constant. Anytime we have y equal to some constant, two things are happening here. Number one is the slope will be equal to zero because if we, when we do graph this line, we have, if I graph plot zero, negative two, <clears throat> and one, negative two, of course, your line ended up looking like that. So the slope is zero, and we will always have and usually what follows from that is that we have a horizontal line in terms of the graph. So once again, anytime we have y equals a constant, like we do right here, negative 2 is a constant, the slope is 0, and the graph that results is a horizontal line. <clears throat> all right, so I'm going to take all of this off so I can officially graph now. And I have to run up to my computer here so I can do that. And so I'm going to plot uh, 0, negative 2, and 1, negative 2. And that's what the graph, of course, should look like. Now, based upon what I just <clears throat> talked about, I want to see if you can figure out what to do in number 5. Okay? I'll give you about a minute or so. So in this problem, we have x equals some, some constant. In fact, the constant is negative 6. So in terms of ordered pairs, we would have negative 6 comma something, negative 6 comma something, negative 6 comma something, and so on. I could write down as many of those 
that I want. And if I do that, like let's just say negative 6 comma 0, which of course is right there, negative 6 comma 1 of course is right there, we can clearly see that in this situation we have a graph that is a vertical line. So similar to the previous problem, uh, when anytime we have x equals some constant, and once again you should add this to your notes, we have two things going on here. First of all, the slope is undefined, and that's basically because we end up with a vertical line there, and the line is, as I just said, vertical in terms of the graph. x is always negative 6 here. So when we have x equals a constant, the slope is always undefined, and the resulting graph is a vertical line. So let's go ahead now and graph this one. Uh, doesn't matter. I could graph uh, negative 6 comma 0 and uh, negative 6 comma 10 if I wanted to. Doesn't matter. x is always negative 6. y can be whatever we want it to be. Okay, so let's go to the back side of your notes and the last problem that we are demoing together here, and then you can start on the assignment. And so this is sort of putting lots of different ideas that we've been talking about lately together. First of all, notice that the equation that is given here is clearly not in slope-intercept form. When we get to unit two, we're going to be calling that standard form because of the way that it looks. So part A, it's telling you to write that equation in slope-intercept form. Remember from last week, slope-intercept form is an equation that looks like it is in the form y equals mx plus b. And then when you find the slope, you're going to enter it here, and when you find the y-intercept, you are going to enter it here. Can I get all of you to put that equation in slope-intercept form? So we're asked to put, first of all for part A, negative 10x plus 4y equals 24 into slope-intercept form. Um, it should have been obvious to you that we have to add 10x to both sides. That was supposed to be a addition symbol. And so we may already consider putting it in the correct order to begin with. So we have 4y equals 10x plus 24. And then to finish this off, we need to divide each part separately. We may as well write it correctly the first time by positive 4, and so we end up with y equals 5 halves x, leave it improper, but make sure you reduce, and 24 over 4 is 6. So this is the equation in slope-intercept form, and so now we can fill in the appropriate spots right here and right here. Please notice that there is an x already there, so we don't have to input the x. So let's go ahead and input what we're supposed to input here. So 5 halves for the slope and 6 was the y-intercept. And now you can graph that using the slope and the y-intercept. So could I get all of you to go ahead and do that? All right, so let's take a look at our graph. And as I just talked about, we clearly see after we plot our y-intercept, that's not what my graph looks like, by the way, um, that when I go to rise 5 and run 2, I'm off of my coordinate plane. And that's the reason why I talked the other day about going in the other direction was for situations like this. So we can't go rise 5 and run 2 because we're off the graph. So instead, we're going to have to go in the downward direction 5 and left 2. That results in the same movement. And just a couple of quick checks. The slope is a positive number, a positive value. Our line is going uphill from left to right. And so we should be good there. Now the last part of this is if I give you one value of an ordered pair and ask you to find the other value so that the ordered pair is a solution, clearly we can't look at our graph because 28 is way off of the coordinate plane. So talk with your shoulder partner really quickly about how you're going to find the y value if the x value is 28. Go. Okay, so I heard from most of you, you're just going to plug or substitute 28 in for x, and then find y. And that's exactly what you should do. So now the question is, well, which equation are you going to do that with? Are you going to use 
uh, the one, the original one, or are you going to use the new one? Well, those two are equivalent to each other. Negative 10x plus 4y equals 24 is the same equation as y equals 5 halves x plus 6. They're just in different forms. Whichever one you think is the easiest to work with is the one that you should use. You could even change the look of it a little bit if you wanted to from one of those two. It doesn't matter. But the idea here is substitute 28 in for x. And honestly, for me, this is the one that I would use. So negative 28, or excuse me, negative 10 times 28 because x is taking on the value of 28 plus 4y equals 24. And then we solve for y. So go ahead and finish that up. So what is the value of y? Tell me. 76. 76. That's what I saw from most of you. Uh, if we just were to continue here, we have negative 280 plus 4y equals 24. You add 280 to both sides. So now I have 4y equals uh, 304. Divide by 4, divide by 4, and y is 76. So let's go ahead and input that value down here. And now we need to do the same thing for part D, except this time I'm giving you the y value. I'm saying that if the y value is negative 70, what is the x value? To create a solution, or it would be a, an order pair that would be on the graph if we had an extremely large uh, coordinate plane. So go ahead and work on part D, and then we are finished for today. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Uh, we're starting with, the, I'm starting with the negative 10x plus 4y equals 24, the original equation. You could have utilized y equals 5 halves x plus 6. It doesn't matter. Um, so we have negative 10x minus 280 equals 24. Add 280 to both sides. And we have negative 10x equals 304. And suddenly, a few of you were like, uh-oh, it doesn't come out even. So what? It doesn't matter. So we end up with x being, if we simplify it, negative 152 over 5. And so that's the value that we're going to substitute in here. Uh, negative 152 over 5. So let's go ahead and do that. And click Submit, and we should be good to go. Okay? All right, so that takes care of all of the new things for today. You can just go ahead and continue on from there and finish this up for homework for tonight.